Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module. In today's topic, we will discuss about some of the technical knowledge on the FICO module part, where we will talk about different tables which are used in SAP FICO module. The table of content which we will be covering in today's training are overview on SAP tables, few basic terms which you should must be knowing before moving on to uh, the table part and to have a over uh, more discussions on the tables. SAP table types that is master data table and transaction tables. Then functional specification overview and FS which refers to functional specification a sample template. So we'll come to that one by one. Moving on to the first that is uh, overview on SAP tables. So SAP is all about tables and fields. Every data and transactions stored are stored at the back end in some of the other tables. SAP as a whole contains more than 125000 tables in SAP system. Excluding the Z and the Y tables for all the components of SAP. So you can assume that how much tables are there which are updated at the back end and the data are stored in them and which gives you the output. It holds the transaction. It holds the master data. Each and every kind of a data are been stored within the SAP with respect to tables. You talk about any module, any component, every component of SAP, whether it is SAP FICO or SD or MM, PP, QM, HCM, ABAP, any, any, any module, every module works on the basis of tables and fields. These are the tables where the data which are executed in the front are been stored in the back end. So that is what we will be talking about. What are the different tables for the SAP FICO module which as a consultant you must be knowing. If you don't know the technicals about your own module it will create a huge problem for you as you will not be able to give a better solution in in case of a customized solution which you want to create for the system. So that is what we are talking about today's topic and training on tables and fields. There are certain basic terms which you must be knowing like table, fields, master data, transaction data, header data, open items and cleared items. Maybe certain things have already been known to you because you have already worked on the on the basic uh, module in FI and the CO. So you must be knowing already about what is a field, what is a master data, what is transaction data, header data, open items or cleared items. But we'll just have a brief on that so as to give you more clarity in case you are you, you would not be knowing it. So first is the table. Table is the is a is a technical part in the SAP system where the data are stored in the back end. You you don't do any anything much in it. It is a standard provided SAP system where uh, this is the uh, the way out where how the data and the transactions are posted. And fields field refers to the different column or options which you fill in the SAP system. Like whenever you execute a transaction in SAP, you fill date, you take company code, you take posting date, you take currency or company code or chart of account or controlling area or GL account. These all respective parts are termed as fields in the SAP system. Let's just take an example. If I execute any of the transaction, like suppose I execute FB50, enter. So you can see on the screen, what are these different options over here to you as document date, posting date, reference, take any of these options. These all options over here are treated as fields in technicals in SAP. So these are different fields. We talk about document type. So it's the document type field. It's a 
it's a currency field it's a amount field it's a gl account field so these are different fields in sap so every every part every column which you fill with the informations are termed as fields in the sap system the next comes up is the master data master data refers to those records based on which the various transaction take place these master data contains various informations details and controls by which the transaction has to behave whenever you do any kind of a transactions before that you need to create the master data for that like you want to go for a gl posting then you need to create a gl master data if you want to have any of the transactions related to vendor or customers before that going for the transaction you need to create the customer master or the vendor master similarly in the co part you need to create the cost element master data or the cost center master data profit center master data so as to use those cost center profit centers in the transactions in the co part so that is about the master data where is the transaction data transaction data refers to the different transactions which we execute for posting the vouchers or the transactions into the sap system so what are the different transactions you do like fb50 fb60 fb02 fb58 fb28 fb54 these all are transactions data which post the transactions in the ledger accounts or in the customer or the vendor account and on the basis of that the financial statements are prepared for the organization so any tra any transaction which you do or any entry which you do which affects the the financials that is refers to a transaction data in fico part moving to the header data whenever you do any transactions you need to fill two type of informations in the in the transaction one is header data and another is transaction data header data relates to the first half of the detail which you fill on the upper side like you fill the document date you can see over here on the screen so this first part which you are to taking up over here is header data like document date posting date reference currency company code header text these are these are termed as header data and for every header data there is a separate table there is a separate table which holds your header data into the system whereas when you come down to the below part on the second part over here this belongs to your transaction data where you fill the informations with respect to the transactions where you take the gl account debit credit amount cost center business area tax codes and all those things so these uh, these uh, various fields are termed as the transaction data in the system so you must be clear that what is a document header data and what is a transaction data header data is saved in a different table accordingly and the transaction data is been saved in a different table on the basis of their classifications moving to the next is open items and cleared items you must be knowing by now what is open item and what is cleared item open item refers to the items or the the line items you can say which are in green if you talk about some of the transactions like i execute suppose i execute this particular report for some of the vendor i have executed this so you'll find okay there is not let me change it to the next report so if i execute this report over here which will take all the different data from the system on the screen and open data basically refers to the data which are not complete which needs certain part to be done so as to make them complete until they are completed they will be staying in a red part so you can see on the screen like this gl 202320 that is fret clearing so you will see over here that different documents are there which are red marked 
these red mark on the first column refers to open open refers to open items open items means that one of the part is complete but the next of the part is yet to be done so that they get compensated or they get the, the cycle of those particular transaction gets completed so once the other part will get completed this this particular green items will move to the sorry the red item will move to the green item part so the color will change from op from the red to the green so the transactions which are reflecting with green are open items and the transactions which are reflecting with sorry the transactions which are with red are open line items and the transactions with green are cleared line items so once like just take a practical example when there is a invoice from a vendor when you post the invoice into the sap system they those invoices are always been open items they are are red marked why because yet the another part is pending that is the payment to the vendor once you do the payment to the vendor with respect to the invoice then in that case you have to clear that invoice of the vendor that is the open item against the payment which indicates that the payment of the invoice is completed and in that case once you do the payment on that particular moment it moves from red to the green that is it moves from the open items to the clear line items in the sap system so again for open items and for clear items there are two different tables for every sub modules of fi part so i'll be covering all of those one by one moving up to the next sap table types in sap fico every transaction is divided into two parts one is master data and another is transaction data again within the transaction data again they are divided into two parts one is open items and another is cleared items so you need to understand how these different tables works and the informations or the the transactions which you post flows to these different tables if you talk about master data there are different master data in fi and co if you talk about fi module in fi there is gl master data there is customer master data vendor master data asset master data then again bank master data which need to be created and each of these different master data has their own tables which is store informations related to it again if you talk about the transaction data these separate module uh, sub module of fi like general data general ledger general ledger again has got two parts one is open items and one is cleared items similarly the customer or the vendor like accounts payable or accounts receivable have their own open items and cleared items and each of these sub modules have separate table for open items and separate table for cleared items just like to have a look master data tables in sap fi there is gl master customer master vendor master similarly there are master data in sap controlling module as well there are master data like cost element profit center cost centers activity type internal order key statistical fields these are different master data in the controlling module for which there are separate tables where the informations related to the basic informations are stored now there are different tables for each of them as on your screen every the table has been assigned with respect to the sub modules as you can see on the screen that is ska1 skb1 there are two tables for gl master for customer master there is knb1 and kna1 there is vendor master for lfb1 and lfa1 for my ma asset master there is anla 
for banking master there is BNKA similarly for SAP controlling for cost element there is CSKA for profit center CEPC for cost center CSKS and for activity type CSLA so we'll be executing each of these different tables and we'll see how it has been reflected in the SAP system see how this table works in the SAP system now moving on to the SAP system to execute any reports to have a look of any of the tables in the SAP system you need to execute a transaction code to display the tables so it is the transaction code on your screen to display tables you have to execute the transaction SE16N so let's execute this SE16N once you put that transaction you have to click on to the enter so now you can see a new screen comes up on your SAP page that is general table display now in that you can see that there is a table option there is a field for text table then layout and then the maximum number of hits so in this you need to assign the table over here in the table field whichever table you want to look for what kind of a data you are looking forward accordingly you can execute the table so just suppose we want to have a look of the various master data GL master data into the SAP system so how can we have a look of that so the first table which we will be executing is SKA1 you need to assign the table over here SKA1 once you put the table you need to enter on the screen so that this table will be read so enter and you will see that now as I clicked on to the enter you can see the different data on one side the different field name have been uh, been reflecting to you on the screen and even you can see the, f the table name has been displayed to you over here GL account master chart of account so this is the GL account master as per the different as per the company's chart of account level now on the on the right on the right hand side there is a technical name and on the left hand side there is a field name in SAP whatever we see in the front of the transactions like GL account vendor name GL number company code vendor posting date each of these different fields have a technical name in SAP that is what you can see the client is there and the clients technical name has been reflected to you on the other side of it on the right side so on the left side there is a field name on the right side that is the technical name of client similarly for chart of account the technical name is KTOPL and in the similar way for GL account the, the technical name is SAKNR if you have worked on as of now yet then you would be able to understand this fully so if you want to ex see the data the master data of a particular chart of account in that case you need to execute this particular table and now what information did you need to fill you have to fill the chart of account over here and if you want to have the list of all the master data for this particular chart of account you can assign the chart of account and then you can execute the report over here so once we execute now what it will do is it will read all the data so you can see on your screen the output has been reflected to you on your screen and you can read over here that the number of hits 353 that means they are total 353 GL master data as on the system so you can see the chart of account is there GL account number and then it reflects you whether it is a part of balance sheet or not so if it is a cross that means it's a part of the balance sheet it again shows the GL account and then it shows the creation date and the creation user ID then it shows the account group if you remember the account group in the FI part in the initial part you need to create the GL account group for mapping purposes so that is it if you move ahead you will find a lot of information related to it like over here you can see the short name and the long long name that is furniture so this is the name of the GL account which uh, we have been displaying similarly you can find all the different data 
related to the other GL as well. So it shows you the GL number along with its description. Similarly, you can have a look of the other table that is SKB1 as well. So SKB1 table is to execute that table again, we need to go back. So execute clicking on the back button. Now over here, we can execute another table SKB1. Now this table is for GL account master at company code level. There is a difference between chart of account level and company code level. A chart of account can be assigned to multiple company codes. That's why there could be multiple GL master data for that particular chart of account level. But when you execute it for a particular company code, it's very, very specific. So SKB1, enter. And now it will change the field. You can see over here the GL master account master company code. So this is a table which shows you the GL master data as per company code. So in, you can even see that the field name has been changed now. The company code is there. Then there is a GL account, authorizations and all. So you can put the company code 1000 or whatever the company code you have. So again, you will always find the field name on the left side and the technical name on the right side. And again, we can go and we can execute this report, this table, and it will reflect you the data with it, which it has for the company code 1000. So executing the report. And now you can see again, the data is there. And now there is a difference at the chart of account level. The data were 353, if you remember, and at the company code level, there is data is 351. That means two GL master were belong to some other company codes. Now here you can find all the further details. That is what is the field status group that has been assigned to whether it is a reconciliation account or not. Then the currency INR line item has been marked in FS00 or not. So every master data detail will be reflected to you. So then sort keys there moving ahead. You will find further things. So these are the number of different things which you find in this particular table. Similarly, if you move on to the other tables of other sub modules like uh, customer for customer, this table is KNB1 and KNA1. The process is pretty simple. The same way you need to execute all the other reports entered and you can see now it shows you the list customer country. Now this table, this particular table is for general data in customer master. So if you want to see the master data for all what is there in the system, you can execute this and you can see the list down now. So they are total as you can see the 90, 90 total customers there are in the system and you can see even there are number of different customers and every customer has a customer code. It shows you the, the country and then the name of the customer and the addresses of the customer. Then they are contact number, street, fax. These are different fields. You can the name one, then again the city, title of that. Then you, if you move ahead further, you will find that it was created on this date and been created by this person. Then moving on further, you will find the group. Then moving on, you will find the vendor. If there is a relationship between them, it will be reflected to you. So this is there in it, language is there, then text number is there, telephone number is there. So there are different number of things which you which are there as per the master data. If you fill that those things, it will be reflected over here else they will show you as blank. Even you can see that somebody has filled the URL as well. So if you fill the URL link, even that will be reflected in the master data. So this is the master data for customer. The, the table name is KNA1. Similarly, you can execute KNB1. Both the table has different datas. Few of them are common for the linkage, else there are differences. So this KNB1 refers to the customer master at company code level. So you can see this is company code. So that means this can be executed at company code level. And the last report which we executed KN a1 belongs to at the client level. So you can put the company code over here and again you can execute it. 
so as to have the company code data. So you can see now the number of data is 89. So this is how you need to execute the customer master data. Similarly, if you move to vendor, again the same way you have to execute the vendor LFB1 or LFA1, whichever of them you want to, LFB1 entered. So you can see now this is vendor master at company code level. Again, you can put the company code in this case and you can execute it. So it shows you all the various vendors which have been created and you can see there are around 500 vendors in the system. So these are the vendor code, then the company code, personal number, created on, created by the user ID, then the reconciliation account which has been assigned to the vendor. Moving ahead you will find further more things if they have been filled up then. So this is how you need to execute this report, this particular table, sorry. So I think now you are very much clear, you need to execute the table with SE16N entered and then you need to put the table over here. So next table which we will be executing is, suppose is asset master ANLA, ANLA entered. And you can see now the various asset related details will be reflected. So now again we can put the company code over here and we can execute. It will give you the list of various assets been created with, within the company code 1000 executing the table. So you can see now the list and there are around 500 different custom assets created. And you can see over here the company code is 1000. This is the asset number then the asset class, then the created by and created on date, changed by and changed on date is also there. There is the asset layout, asset account determination. I think you must be knowing it if you have done the asset accounting. Then there are a number of different things, first acquisition, capitalization date, retirement date or deactivation date if there is any deactivation or retirement been done. Moving ahead, if we fill the vendor or the con origin country and all these in the master data of asset, those will be reflected too over here. Even the quantity has been reflected in this. So these are different fields on the screen which have been reflected to you. Quantity, asset, country, name and all. These are different fields which have been reflecting different values if those have been maintained. And here is the description of the asset is there. So this is the asset description that this asset 100001 belongs to uh, is been named as Al is Steel Almira. So accordingly you can move ahead further you will find further details. So this is about the master data of asset and you can see the, the table has been described over here as well asset master record segment. Similarly, now you can execute the bank master data BNKA. BNKA, it shows you the bank, bank name, bank key, bank address details. So, if you execute this table now, it will be reflecting you the bank related master data, and you can see the bank key is known as the bank master data. This shows when it has been created and by whom it has been created, and it shows you the name of the bank the region it's belong to and the address of the bank that is the street, city, then SWIFT code is also there. Then you can put the bank number as well, post bank, address name, branch can also be filled. The methods can also be assigned over here on the, or to the bank. So these are the different master data fields which need to be filled when you create the bank key. I think you must have done that in the banking part as well. Now moving on, we are done with the SAP FISR. These are the different asset masters. Similarly, you can create the, uh, you can have a look of the various uh, master data in the controlling part like for cost element it is CSK. So we'll, we'll just look for a couple of them and then move on. CSKA, you can enter on the screen now and you will see the description has been changed. So it has a very limited fields with itself. You can see over here. So we can put the chart of account and then we can execute it. So once you execute, you will find the different cost elements which have been created. You can see on the screen the chart of account is there. 
cost element is there and then create creation date enter date then further your name of name and the description has also been reflected to you so this is cost element creation similarly we can move on and we can have a look at the profit center that is CEPC enter and you can see the description has been changed profit center master data table and you can execute that if there is no option over here of client or the company code or the chart of account you can directly execute even the profit center is been created at the client level that's why so we can execute it and it will show you all the different list of profit centers so you can see there are 27 profit center created on the screen the creation date is there the the controlling area is there then they are entered by created by valid from and to date is also there when we create a profit center you need to fill valid from and valid till date so that has been assigned as well and then the person responsible user responsible currency department if you want to fill you can fill it up so these are the different fields which uh, can be assigned moving on there is a segment is also been assigned the name of the profit center is there then the profit center text is there long text is there so these are the number of different fields which are there which we need to fill when we create the profit center and those when we save those data those data is saved in the particular tables so this is how you can create you can have a look of the different data within the particular tables depending what kind of a table you are looking for which master data you are looking for and for that you can execute these different tables on the screen moving on to the next now is the transaction data or the date uh, transaction data tables now in the transaction data tables moving on there are two most important tables which uh, is used in a day-to-day -day many activities by a consultant for finance department they are BSEG that is termed as BSEG that is accounting document line item and BKPF that refers to accounting document header these two tables is something which you must know well now one as you can read from the description one is a line item and one is a header we even discussed uh, in the previous part that what is a line item or open item and what is a header data so whenever you post a transaction there are two ty types of data which need to be filled one is a header data a header data is something which is known as accounting document header table over here so to have a look of the header data of those transactions at table level we need to execute the table BKPF and if you want to see the line items like what is the debit and what is the credit whenever a document is posted there are at least two doc two line items one is a debit and one is a credit so if you want to see the debit credit line items and their details further what are the different items different amount different narrations being filled in those things those part then that case we need to execute the table BSEG BSEG so <coughs> sorry so these are the different two tables which are very very important from finance perspective now moving on to the first table that is BSEG BSEG let's see how this looks like so the same transaction is there to have a look of any table it may be in SAP you need to put the, the, the table name BSEG BSEG enter on the screen so once you entered you can see accounting document segment this BSEC table is a very important and one of a very dangerous table from SAP FI perspective. This is a very heavy table. Why? Because whatever the different data which has been posted into the SAP with respect to the finance and accounts, it stores all those transactions within this table. Single holded that is why this is termed as one of the heaviest storing data storing table in SAP and whenever we do any customization or any Z programs we try to use the list of this table so that it doesn't uh, take more and more data or even using this table will take uh, will 
impact the performance of the customization because it is the heaviest table in the FI path. So to look the different transactions at line item level like a document is there there are two line items in it one is debit and one is credit. Now I want to see both the line item details at the table level in that case we need to execute this particular table that is BSEG. Now suppose I want to execute I want to just have a look of few things in it. So what I need to do is I need to put the company code. If you know the respective document number you can fill those document number else you can execute it as a whole. But mind it whenever you execute it for the whole uh, client or the company code there are huge data. It may take couple of minutes or it can take even couple of 5, 10, 15 minutes as well to procure all the data on your screen. And if you do that in a in a real time scenario in any of the company, it may slow down your system or even the organization uses systems because it consumes a lot of RAM memory to fetch those data from the back end and present it to you on the front desk. So it should be concise what kind of a data you are looking for and put those respective things over there on the screen like for example let's stay execute the transaction FBL3N and select few of the documents which I want to see from there onwards. So suppose I select a GL and I want to see only those documents from that part. How can I have a look of those? So suppose I select the building, execute. So in building, these are the different transactions. I just want to see few of them in the BSEC table. I don't want to see all of them. So what I can do is I can select some of the documents from over here, copy them and then I can move up over here and put the company code and then to the document number I can go to this more option. And in this I can copy paste those data, paste it and then execute and you can take this document number has been taken up over here and you need to put the fiscal year as well that is 2014 because the same document number are, or ranges are being used in every fiscal year we need to copy from one fiscal year to another the same number ranges so you must take the fiscal year as well for that. Now we can execute this particular table. Once it has been executed, you can see the output. So there are different line items in it and you can see these particular documents has got 144 line items in it. Like if you talk about 300004 document number, it has got not one but around uh, number of different line items if you can read. Line item 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It has number of transactions within it. So you can see till 4 document number there are 27 line items in it and if you look the transaction it will show everything to you. I think this will give you a uh, more confusing uh, it would be more confusing for you to understand. So let's take a simple example of it further. So let's take a bank jail and I want to see the detail of these different documents. So we can execute this again in the table. I need to go to this more and I need to delete all entries first and then I can copy paste new entries to it and then execute. So now once we did this now we can execute the table so as to fetch the data. So now this will give you a better picture. Now there are around 49 line items as you can see. The document number 1 over here 330091 has got two line items as you can see. Line item 1, line item 2. What does these two means? These two means that one is a posting key is 50, another posting key is 25. That means the K, K refers to the vendor account type, means vendor is credit debited and the 
the GL has been debited. And if you move further, you will find that there is a profit center has been assigned to it. Even you can see this H and S. H and S is the indicator for debit and credit. If you go for the F4 button on the keyboard, you will find the description that H refers to credit and S refers to debit. So even you can find with the help of this that H refers to credit. That means this particular first line item has been credited and the second line item has been debited. If you move ahead, you will find the amount over here on the screen. Even there are different fields. Maybe certain fields are the information has been put up. Certain fields you will not find. Certain in in some of them you will find and some you will not you may not find. Like this is over here is the tax code and this is a WT which refers to withholding tax. So in below part, if you see the withholding tax has been has been charged as well as on the screen. Moving moving ahead, you will find further informations in it like transactions then there is a base amount withholding base amount then moving on you will find the value date assignment field is there if you want to maintain the assignment and if you put any text in the line item that text will also be reflected to you then you can move ahead to the controlling area has been reflected then again there are number of different fields like order, billing document, sales document. So if any data comes from the sales and, and distribution module those are updated over here. If there is any asset that comes to you over here moving ahead you will find that they are GL number also. And if the vendor is there then vendor column has been reflected over here to you. There is a customer column which reflects the customer code. Then it shows you the whether it is a balance sheet account or it is a profit and loss account. Moving further it shows you the baseline date. So there are a lot of different and all informations related to the transactions are reflected over here to you. Again the payment amount is there because this is a payment. So payment is also been reflected over here in the screen. So the, these are different fields which have been there. It's not small. It a, has a huge list of different fields. And whatever the transactions data you fill while posting a particular transaction, all those things are reflected over here in this BSEC table. Mind it, whatever transactions, I mean that, that whatever transactions you do and whatever the information you put up over there, those all informations are updated over here in the fields. So this is a very very important table. Moving to the next is now this is for the line item display. It shows you the line item informations. That means the transaction data informations. Moving to the next is the header data. How I can see the header data. Header data refers to let's see a document to give you an overview. So you can see on this part, the first part over here that is data entry view, this part. This part refers to the header data which includes document number, company code, fiscal year, document date, posting date, period, then reference, currency. These are the different fields which, which have been termed as the header data and even apart from that if you go to this over here on this cap display document header whatever the information is reflecting to you over here these are also termed as header data like document type header text reference currency reference transaction then reference key these all are a part of header data so if you want to see the header data of the doc of the documents in that case I need to go to the transaction sorry the table that is uh, BKPF so moving to BKPF enter so you can see over here accounting document header and even you can read over here these are the different header fields which have been on your left hand side of the screen that is the company code, document number, fiscal year. Some of those fields will be common as a so as to have a relationship or a link between the other tables like the company code, document number, fiscal year. These are the link for the other 
tables but apart from that if you look for document type document date posting date period these are similarly going ahead transaction code reference year document header text you will not find these fields in the bsec table because bsec table is the is been holding the posting transaction data it doesn't holds the header data so header data you will always find in the bkpf part so if you want to see the header data of any of the transaction you can take the company code and then you can select the document number with more copy and then transfer data and now we can execute this with the fiscal year now these are the parameter which you must need to fill at least now we can go and we can execute it over here and once you execute it shows you the different data heading uh, header data related to the document so you can see now the company code document number fiscal year it shows you the document type document type is kz kz refers to vendor payment then it shows you the document date when the document date was put when the posting date is there then the period is there entered on when the document was been entered at what time it was been entered then by whose username it was been entered the transaction code is there reference is there header text is there these all are the part of header data for each of the documents even you can see the reference keys there for reference part information storing further informations for the transactions so there are a lot of different fields which uh, have been updated from many of the other modules as well which have been integrated and many from the fi site so these are the two different table which are very very important now moving on to the general ledger general ledger has got two different table one is open item and one is cleared item so both the transaction whatever whether there is open item or cleared item i stored in two different separate tables so if you go for bsis enter so you can see over here uh, accounting secondary index it doesn't update you anything over here now so you can go and you can execute over here for any of the gl or even you can execute it at comp at the document uh, number level as well whether that is a that is a clear item or not and you can execute this part so this is i have just given you an overview how we can execute different table at the master data level or the transaction level and these are the different table in general ledger account receivable accounts payable which you can execute at your end and you can you can just have a look how these these works similarly they are banking table which store the bank data like uh, when you make any payment or you receive the incoming payment those document information like uh, the bank number name of the bank check number lot number then the payment date value date bank key these all are stored within the banking data that is payr pair if you want to execute that we can execute that in the table se16n enter we need to execute the table p a y r enter so you can read the detail payment medium file now over here you need to put the company code paying company code and then you, if you want you can search it with the house bank for a particular bank also and even you can search it for all the banks together even if you want to have the data related to payment for a particular vendor or a customer that option is also there on the screen even you can put the run on date like when we run the automatic payment run on particular day if you know when the automatic payment run was done you can put that automatic payment run date over here and it will show you the data related to bank payment for that particular date even you can execute it at check number level as well so whichever uh, level you want to execute it you can put the data in it and you can execute for that particular part similarly going below you will find a lot more, more and further informations related to the banking so suppose i take a certain document uh, and for which we can have a look for So suppose I put certain banking data payment document number over here 
execute and now let's execute this to have the look so you can see now these are the different document number which has been put up and it shows you the information that the house bank is there account id of house bank is there the payment method is c which refers to check and then to and from refers to the check number check number to and from the run date is been mentioned the id is mentioned and the vendor number has also been reflected to you if it will be an incoming payment then the customer will be reflected to you then again the account number of the bank has been reflected the payment document number this is the document number which has been generated from the system which has been reflected to you then it shows you the year as well and then the payment date moving on to the amount then print date when was the check printed print time is also been reflected to you print user who has printed it has also been reflected to you now even you can see the name of the pay to whom the payment was made has also been mentioned over here on the screen name of the pay has been mentioned so this is the pair table which store all the data relating to the banking transactions moving to the next is the asset accounting for asset accounting there is a table for header data that is a n e k and there is a table for the line item data that is a n e p so these are the different tables similarly these tables are executed for the banking part uh, the cost controlling part as well now moving on further let's uh, have a look at the the particular tables over here you can just have a look on this so you can see how these tables are linked to each other if you take care of that let's uh, take a more simpler one like this is there accounts payable so accounts payable this is vendor master data now vendor master data can be have got multiple tables that we have discussed right back so they are purchasing data there is general data there is company code data so we have discussed about a lf a1 lf b1 and there is one more that is purchasing data which is stored the data uh, the from with respect to the the material management department if you look these are the different table lf m m1 this is for vendor master record purchasing organization data then lf a1 that is vendor master general selection lf b1 for vendor master company code data so you can have a data of master vendor master data at company code level you can have at client level also and you can have even for the just for the material management department which has been created by them as well moving further down you will find account receivable data again account receivable customer master can be created at client level at company code level and even at the sales area level as well so everyone has got their own tables within themselves so these are a the different table related to the customer master which are linked to each other moving down then you will find table for cost centers profit center cost elements also within profit center you will see cepc that is for profit center master data table which contain the profit center field valid to and from date controlling area and many more which we have just seen a while back similarly you will can you can have a look for the general ledger data of asset master as well which we have executed and have seen skb1 ska1 sk a t so there are huge list of tables within the sap system you can see these are the different tables on your screen further like for asset header posting data there is a different table a n e k for asset line item there is a different table a n e b i already said that there are more than more than one 25000 tables within sap i cannot discuss each and every of them i would be taking or highlighting just few of them as a which are more more important and frequently been used uh, within day to day requirements so a different table for depreciation then different table for asset down payment settlements you will find further down uh, accounting header data that is bkpf which we have discussed earlier as well Similarly, you go down, you will find BSEG as well in, uh, over here. That is the BSEG table. You can see over here. 
BSEG, you will find BSID, BSIK for open item in customer and vendors. Then below table starting with C refers to the controlling data table. Even there are table for electronic bank, uh, bank statement line items as well. So huge list of different tables are there in it. So this is how different table works and this is just to give you a basic knowledge with respect to the tables that these tables are very important once uh, you are in a consulting line to see a lot of different data to confirm the data at times and even at times when you are going for any Z customization or maybe a customized report to be developed or any enhancements to be done you should have the knowledge of these fields this table and the different fields within it even if you don't know how to go for and check in which table that particular field will be even then even from the transaction level you can know that that particular field belongs to which table like uh, I can just uh, explain it to you suppose I am over here on this screen I am just displaying the document on on my screen and I want to know that suppose that this particular document number or the document date the document date is stored in which table in the SAP system because there are one more than thousands of tab, uh, more than 125,000 tables in the SAP system so how can I come to know that out of those 125,000 tables in which table this document date is stored so if you don't know that even you can simply know with uh, put the cursor on that particular field and click onto the F1 key on the keyboard once you click onto the keyboard a new screen opens in front of you you can see that document date in document now to see the document uh, this document date table and field you need to go to the this particular tool over here which has been made over here this is a technical information you can click on to that technical information and once you click you will find a new pop-up screen now if you read that that's give you many informations within it like the program name the screen name then now over here what is important for you is this table that is the field data you can find the table over here BKPF table name and the field name is BL date so within the BKPF the technical name of the field that is document date is BL date so th this is the technical name of the field that is document date similarly if you want to see for any of the other field you can close this down suppose I want to see the field of amount in which this particular amount is stored again I can put the cursor on this particular amount and I can click on to the F1 key and I can go to again the technical information and we can ex click on it and you will find the table that is BSEG so the first part before the underscore is the table name that is BSEG and the field name is AZBET so this is how even if you don't know the table if you know the transaction the document which you have been displaying if you click on the F1 button on that particular field even that will give you the table in which that particular data has been stored with so this is all about the table within the SAP FI and the CO module which we have discussed how these table works the table flow the different kind of tables and this is very very important in the technical perspective for a function for a functional consultant now moving on further the next is functional specification so once you got some knowledge of the technical part like the table the fields and all those things now the next part comes up is the functional specification a functional specification or sometimes a functional specifications is a formal document used to describe in detail for software developers a products intended capabilities appearance and interactions with users the functional specification is a kind of a guideline and 
continuing reference points as the developers write the programming code. So this functional specification so in general terms the functional specification states what the proposed system is to do whereas design is how the system is to be constructed to meet the functional specification or you can say that whenever there is a need of any customized development or reports to be developed a functional consultant needs to write a functional specification he writes about what kind of a things is required and how those things can be taken up from the table and the fields in writing it some consideration of design issues may take place to ensure a realistic system is specified the specific the functional specification which is also known as fs in the short form should be clear consistent precise and unambiguous the user requirement may mean that the user interface should be included in this document for some project whereas for other this will be done at the design stage either within a document or developed via a, a prototype So this functional specification comes next to the configuration when it comes to the functional consultant job without mastering it your sap experience is incomplete so when you find certain things certain requirements of the client not fulfilled within the standard sap system you need to go and customize those things as per the client requirement and for that now you need to design a functional specification first the where you would be explaining the technicals how that to be programmed and then on the basis of that an abap which is termed as a technical consultant is to work on and has to do the programming so as to provide that particular customized part so functional specification are written when the standard sap is not able to meet the client's requirement based on the functional spec an abapa will write the technical design document and then the functional guy will test the same in the system and document the result in his test script so there could be different kind of functional specifications like enhancements modifications there could be reports there could be client customized report there could be interfaces then there could be edi so there are different kind of enhancements uh, different kind of customizations which are done and on the basis of that different kind of functional specifications are prepared by the functional consultant that is the fico if it is related to the fi finance and accounts department part if it relates to sales and billing then uh, an a sales and distribution consultant is supposed to write the fs for that so the objective should be that the technical guy should understand it in one go and not to reduce any further clarif clarification in that so it has been written so that it can be simply understand understood by the technical consultant and it can not it should not delay and should deliver the the particular reports within a time period so if we have a look of a sample template how an fs has been designed uh, just to show you an overview this is the screen on your uh, the fs part if you can read it this is the functional specification where you need to assign the version then the specification number has to be put in by the client side or by the company side then you need to put the issue date when the fs was been created and then there are certain options in preparation to be reviewed approval then released then development number has to be put in it business process number then there has to be a version date description has to be put in so the there could be version 1 version 2 version 3 there addition or there you can say certain modifications done so the version keeps on changing from one to another and then there are responsible person who is responsible and then whether it is a part of uh, who are the person for concept and for implementation then you have to put the 
area module suppose it is related to FICO then FI module has to be assigned the date has to be put on over here then to be requested now the user or the party who has asked for this customization you have to put their name over here and then the brief description about the customization has to be assigned moving down the general question impact on not creating the program then if you don't create if it is a part of an urgent preparation then the description describe the alternative found if there is no customization then what is the alternative then there are there are if you move down the program type has to be defined whether the program which you are going to develop or customized whether that is a report or an enhancement or a module pool or an interface or it is a conversion program or it is a form what kind of a program type it is so you need to cross that suppose it is a form like this is for a payment advice suppose payment advice basically is a form apart from that if you would have been creating any LSMW or a, or a BDC for data upload then it would have been a conversion over here now moving on to the priority you need to decide the that particular customization pro priority whether it is a high medium or low moving to the characteristics you need to decide whether it will be a drill down report an ALV or others then the frequency has to be decided that that particular customization which will be done will be used on a daily basis weekly or monthly basis then further if it is an in interfaces then real time or it will be done through the batches or how and then moving down the line you need to have the sign off so the sign off has to be taken up with the with the team lead or probably from the client side or the project manager people who are involved in reviewing the FS so the core team member person will be signing the particular uh, the particular functional specification and from the client side as well and then approval by the project manager has to be done and then received and date has to be mentioned so and below then the section 2 is for business needs and requirement if there kind of any kind of a description has to be put up over here that can be defined as well moving down further again it describes the whole different part like uh, selection criteria has to be filled then the process logic you need to give the logic to it that how a payment advice will be developed so you can see the logic over here that these are the field mappings the field mappings are with the help of SAP fields and the tables. So over here, a vendor code has to be picked up with the field is lift is Lifner. Lifner is the technical name of vendor. Similarly, date date over here date refers to the posting date. So the posting date technical name is there in it. Then the vendor name vendor name technical name is name one and name two that has to be picked up address need to be picked up of the vendor in the payment advice so these are the field mappings which need to be done you can see over here these are the different technical details which need to be assigned these all fields you will finding in the fourth column over here is street street then uh, the check number that is chect check date valut amount vr btr document number as bell these all are the technical name which has been picked up from tables so the data will be picked from there and then on the basis of that it will be taken up in a particular report form or a form part where the value will be reflected and a payment advice will be printed. So this is how a functional specification is created in the SAP system. So this is all about the functional specification. Even we can have this vendor payment file if you double click on it and it will open up it shows you the logic that vendor code has to be reflected on the top then the date will be there then the vendor name address has to be reflected over here moving down it is the subject of payment advice then the a small details related to the vendor uh, payment details like the document number date reference number amount tds net payment if there is any paid from the uh, from the company so it includes all those details and then below moving down the company code and all those things has to be assigned even if you can see now in the same functional specification you need to put the test cases as well 
uh, on the so as the the particular technical guy can do the testing so the test cases has to be has to be maintained or has to be assigned over here as well so you can see over here the unit testing program name has been mentioned the developer name who will be working on it then the team member has to be assigned so this is how a functional specification overview or a sample you can have a look on is been done so this is a part of this uh, training session is to give you a technical know-how on the table and the functional specification how has it been done and that is it we are done for the day thank you